Good day and welcome to Yashua Radio. Today we're going to start with this series and we're going to focus on why is it important to understand and study the Word of God in the end times. Firstly, the Word of God is the whole Bible. In the Old Covenant, God is introduced to us and in the prophets and the other writings, we also read the things to come. In the renewed covenant, we read about God's love for his creation and our way to salvation. We see prophecy being fulfilled. God's word, his instructions to us is also called the Torah. Why is it therefore important to obey the word or the instructions of God? The Torah or the words of God gives wisdom, knowledge, and everlasting life to those who believe. For the word of God is the character of Elohim himself. What does the word law mean? From a biblical viewpoint, not a Greek viewpoint. What do you experience in your heart when you hear the word law? What you experience in your heart is a mirror image of your attitude towards the one giving that law. What does King David say about the law? In verse 97, Oh, how I love your Torah. It is my study all day long. Ain't that amazing? Torah does not only mean law, though. It is also the first five books of the Bible written by Moshe, Moses. It is the covenant between God and his people. It is the instructions that God gave to mankind to live in the character of God. If we look at the word mishpat, it means divine law. Mishpat is divine law, including the act the crime and the penalty, including a particular right or a privilege. Leviticus 4 verse 22. You are to have one right ruling for the stranger and for the native. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim. There is but one law for all mankind. Romans 11, 24. For if you were cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these who are the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? Yahshua obeyed Torah. For he is the word of God. He is the Torah became flesh. Matthew 5, 17. Do not think that I came to destroy the Torah or the prophet. I did not come to destroy, but to complete. The law of God was never given for us to be saved never given for salvation. We must not put our trust in the law either. The law. We must put our trust in the law giver, the Lord himself. You can only be saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yahshua Mashiach. Deuteronomy 4 verse 6. And you shall guard and do them. That's the Torah, the instructions. For this is your wisdom and your understanding 
before the eyes of the people who hear all these laws, and they shall say, only a wise and understanding people is this great nation. The Torah was given as a guideline to discipline people, to learn more about God and to love Him and what God created, the whole creation. It was also given to introduce you to Yahshua the Messiah. Galatians 3 verse 24. Therefore the Torah became our trainer unto the Messiah in order to be declared right by belief. When studying the Word of God, it is also important to study the Word with a Hebrew viewpoint and not a Greek viewpoint. We will also discover that grace is not something new, as some people proclaim, that was only introduced in the renewed covenant or the renewed testament. People experience grace in the Old Testament because it is part of God's character. Ecclesiastics 1 verse 9. What has been is what shall be. What has been done is what shall be done. And there is no new matter under the sun. It is, script is it scriptural to study, to understand the whole Bible, or is it only the New Testament believers that need to study only the New Testament in order to obey Jesus? We can also ask the question, why did believers stop? Living the word of God. Where is it written that the Old Testament is not important today? Or that it is for the Jews? Not in my Bible. Therefore, it must be a doctrine of men. Why or who had done away with studying and teaching the whole word of God in the first place? That's the question we need to ask. If we look at Deuteronomy 4.24 and on. For Yahweh your Elohim is a consuming fire, a jealous hell. When you bring forth children and grandchildren and shall grow old in the land and shall do correctly and make, sorry, shall do corruptly and make a grave image in the form of whatever, and shall do what is evil in the eyes of Yahweh your Elohim to provoke him. I shall call the heavens and the earth to witness against you on that day, that you soon completely perish from the land which you pass over the Jordan to possess. You do not prolong your days in it but are completely destroyed. And that is exactly what happened to Israel. And that is exactly what happened to any nation on the earth. When your cup is full, when they disobey God, even if they don't know him, when their cup is full, the Lord sent in an enemy to destroy them and to take over their land. The land actually spew them out cause of their transgressions. 27, 27. And Yahweh shall scatter you among the peoples, and you shall be left few in number among the Gentiles where Yahweh drives you. And there you shall serve mighty ones, the work of man's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. But from there, that's where we are now among the nations. From there you shall seek Yahweh of Elohim and shall find him. This is the condition. When you search for him with all your heart and with all your being in order to obey the Lord your God fully 
Deuteronomium 4 verse 30. In your distress, when all these words shall come upon you in the latter day, the days we are in now, then you shall return to Yahweh your Elohim and shall obey his voice. People cry out to Yahweh for true. Therefore, the word of God is revealed to those that seek truth and seek Yahweh with all their heart and with all their being. For Yahweh, your Yahweh, is a con compassionate Yahweh. He does not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he has sworn to them. For as for ask now of the days that are past, which were before you, since the day that Elohim created man on the earth, and ask from one end of the heavens to the other end of the heavens, whether there has been a word as great as this, or has been heard like this. There's nothing like the word of God himself. Another reason to study the word is for us to be able to disciple other believers. If you don't know the word of God, how can you help? How can you disciple other believers? This is exactly what Joshua and the apostles did. Apostle Paul advised us. In his letter, second letter to Timothy 3 verse 16, all scripture is breathed by Elohim and it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for setting straight, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Elohim might be fitted, equipped for every good work. When Paul wrote this letter, there were no New Testament. He was busy writing one of the letters that's now part of the new or renewed. Testament. Therefore, he referred to the Tanakh, to the Old Testament, the Old Covenant as it's called today, because there were no new, not written at all. And he said, use the Old Testament for teachings, to reprove, to setting someone straight, for instruction in righteousness. When the letter was written, only the Old Testament exists. Think about that. In these sessions, we will make use of specific words. So let's define them like Tanakh. Tanakh is an abbreviation of three words, which is Torah, which is prophets, and other writings. Tanakh is the Old Testament. The Torah itself can also refer to the five books, the first five books of the Bible. The New Testament can also call the British Hadas, British Covenant, and Hadas is a renew, which is made new. The Torah is given to us by our Heavenly Father as a teaching and to instruct us to help and govern our relationship with God, with other believers, with unbelievers even with nature and with the rest of God's creation. King David said, Psalm 119, verse 105, Your word is a lamb to my feet and a light to my path. If we study and understand scripture, then the word of God will also be a lamb to our feet and a light to our farm. Do you think that it's important to look at Yahshua as an example, to do what Yahshua did? What will be a definite yes in my That will be a definite yes. Don't you agree? So what must we as believers then do? What must leaders of churches teach a congregation. In other words, what did Joshua and the apostles teach? Luke 24 verse 27. 
and giving from Moshe, from the Torah, from the five books from Genesis, if you will, and to all the prophets, he, that's Yahshua, was explaining to them in all the scriptures the matters concerning himself. So they used the Old Testament to teach people, to tell them who Yahshua is. Today we only want to use the New Testament and we can't prove who he is. It's only written in the New Testament, it's the Son of Man, he's the Son of God. But from the Old Testament, we can prove it. And that's why it's so important to study the whole Word of God. That's what Yahshua did, that's what Jesus taught his followers to do, and exactly what the apostles did themselves. Go you therefore and do the same. Abba, we thank you for the opportunity to study your word. We thank you for your spirit of truth that will reveal your truth. And we ask, Father, that you will write your words, your Torah, your instructions, your loving words on our hearts. And that you will renew our minds to the minds of our Master, Yahshua Messiah, so that we can focus on you, focus on your words, and only do what you instruct us to do. We thank you that you will give us a spirit of discernment so that we will discern the lie, for we hate the lie, but we love you. We proclaim this, Father, in the name of Yahshua, our Messiah. Amen.